Welcome to daily newspaper analysis of Shankarai's Academy. Today's date is 11th September 2024. Hope you are having a great day. Here is the list of news article that we are going to discuss today. First news article is about the MP cabinet raises MSP for soya bean to send proposal to the union government for approval. So this news article is given in the newspaper The Hindu page 2. So based on this article we are going to have a detailed discussion about the MSP which is the minimum support price from the prelims perspective. The next news article is India can be a trusted partner in the semiconductor industry. So this article is given in the newspaper Indian Express page 9. So here we will be having a detailed discussion about the semiconductor industry, its application and the recent semicon initiative undertaken by the government of India. And lastly we have the green steel mission eyed amid the climate change thrust. So, this article is given in the newspaper Live Min page 2. Here we will be having a detailed discussion about the green steel, how it is produced, what are its advantages and the recent green steel mission which is introduced by the government of India from the prelims perspective. So, without further delay, let us get into today's discussion. So, before that we have an important announcement for you. Shankar IAS Academy is going to conduct an All India UPSC Mains Mock Test to boost your UPSC Mains preparation. You can enroll by clicking in the link given below. So now let us get into today's discussion. So this news article MP cabinet raises MSP for the soya bean to send proposal to the union government for approval is given in the newspaper The Hindu as already said. So as per the demand of the farmers and the opposition party the Madhya Pradesh cabinet has raised the MSP for soya bean from current price which is 4000 to the 4800. So this approved proposal is now being sent to the union government for their approval. One important thing you have to note here is that Madhya Pradesh accounts for about 50 percentage of total production of soya bean. They are the highest producer of soya bean in case of India. So, with this article as base, we will detailly discuss about the MSP. So, what is this MSP? So, MSP is the minimum support price and it is acting as a safety net for the farmers. Let me explain why this is acting as a safety net. This minimum support price is nothing but the price which is fixed by the government of India at which the crops are procured from the farmers. So, in this way, this minimum price is guaranteed for the farmers for the crops they are cultivating. So, this MSP is recommended by the CACP which is nothing but the Commission for Agricultural Cost and Prices. So, they will determine this MSP based on the cost of production, what is the trend of the prices in the current market situation and the international market condition along with it the demand and supply is also an important role in the determination of the MSP. Another important point with respect to MSP is that based on the recommendation of Sma Swaminathan committee, government of India has announced in the year 2018 that the MSP will be equal to the 1.5 times the cost of production. This is an important data regarding the MSP. So, now we will see what are the important functions of the MSP one by one. As we already discussed, MSP is the minimum price which is guaranteed by the government of India to the crops cultivated by the farmers. In this way, they are setting a minimum price. So, the market price will not go below this minimum price. So, thereby it will regulate the price stabilization in the market. Next important function is the income security. Usually this MSP is announced before the sowing period. So, the farmer, the farmer will have an ensured profit for the crops he is cultivating. Along with it, the MSP is announced for a multiple crops such as cereal, pulses and oil seeds. So, thereby it helps in the crop diversification as well. With the help of MSP, the exploitation by the intermediaries is cut down because a minimum price is ensured by the government. So, they intermediaries cannot charge a price below this MSP. So, this will help the farmers. The MSP also helps to correct the market inefficiencies and ensures a fair distribution to the consumers. These are the important functions of the MSP. As already said, CACP which is the Commission for Agricultural Cost and Production will recommend the MSP to the CCEA which is the Cabinet Committee on Economic Affairs. So, this CACP will analyze the cost of agricultural products 
and its production method. So, based on this analysis, they will recommend the MSP to the CC. EA. So, this analysis of the production cost will also help the government in the formulation of policies which will ensure the welfare of the farmers. So, coming to the function of FCI, they are responsible for the procurement, distribution and storage of food grains. So, this food corporation of India is working under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. So, one main function is the procurement. So, they will procure the food grains from the farmers at the MSP price. So, they are also responsible for the storage and the distribution of food grains. So, they will distribute the food grains using PDS which is the public distribution system under the NFSA Act which is the National Food Security Act. They are also responsible for managing the buffer stock. So, this excess buffer stock is very much helpful in case of natural disaster or in case of economic turn down or food crisis. So, these are the important functions of the CACP and the FCA with respect to MSP. In brief, CACP is responsible for recommendation of the MSP price and FCA is responsible for the procurement, storage and distribution of the food grains. Almost 23 crops are covered under the MSP which includes 7 cereals, 5 pulses, 7 oil seeds and 4 commercial crops. Along with it, sugar cane is given the fair and remunerative price. So, now we will see what are the concepts used for the calculation of this MSP. First is the A2 method. So, in this method, the MSP is calculated based on the input cost which is done by the farmers for such as the fertilizer cost, the seed cost are included in this a2 method. It is the actual paid out cost or the out of pocket expenses. The next method is the A2 plus FL method. So, in Indian agriculture, family labors are an important factor in case of production. So, in this method, the family labor is valued and they are included in the calculation of the MSP. And third method is the C2 which is the comprehensive cost method. So, this will include the A2 and A2 FL Along with it, it also includes the both direct and indirect costs such as the interest which is paid to the fixed capital such as the land. So, now we will see a prelims practice question with respect to the article which we were discussing previously. The first statement is the MSP is determined by the government in, of India based on the recommendations of the Commission for Agricultural Cost and Prices which is the CACP. Next statement is the, as per the recommendation of Swaminathan Commission, the MSP is fixed at the level of 1.5 times the cost of production. So, in this question, both these statements are correct as we have seen in the discussion. So, the correct answer is C, both A and B. So, now let us move on to the next article discussion. So, look at this news article. Our Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that India can become a trusted partner in case of the semiconductor supply chain. So, he says that democracy along with the technology is the right blend to create the welfare for the people of India. So, on this note, we will have a detailed discussion about the semiconductor covering all its aspects from the prelims perspective. So, first, Semiconductors are nothing but materials which will conduct electricity at certain conditions. So, they are in between the conductors and the insulators. For example, we have silicon, germanium elements. So, semiconductor is used in a variety of sectors which we will be discussing in the subsequent slides. So, that is why this semiconductor is called as the building blocks of the modern technology. The subsequent phases, India is having high digital ambitions. So, all these ambitions are heavily relying on the semiconductor. That is why there is a need to establish a strong semiconductor ecosystem in the current era. Now, we will see what are the application of semiconductors in daily life. First is the electronics starting from smartphones, laptops, tablets, TVs. In every electronic appliances, semiconductors are being used. Even in health sectors, imaging systems such as the CT scan and the MRI, semiconductors are used. It is also used in the pacemakers and the next important application is the telecommunication services. The semiconductors are used in the routers, switches and the processors. 
which enables the communication. Next important application is in the automotive system. So, these semiconductors are used in the GPS system, sensors and the electronic vehicles. Next is the solar cells or the photovoltaic cells. So, these photovoltaic cells are used to convert the solar energy to the electricity. So, these photovoltaic cells are using semiconductors to do this process. Similarly, power convectors are also using the semiconductors. So, these are the main applications of semiconductors. First is the electronics, communication system, automotive, healthcare and the renewable energy resources devices. So, now we will see what is the current semiconductor ecosystem with respect to India. So, firstly, you have to understand that India is a leader and a good player in case of design and software services with respect to the semiconductor. But we are having a gap in case of manufacturing. We do not have fabrication plants which will produce the semiconductor chips which can be applied in the various sectors which we have discussed earlier. That is why government and industries are collaborating using the PPP which is the public-private partnership which will bridge the gap in the manufacturing of the semiconductor. One important thing you have to note here is India is having a large talent pool of engineers in their country. We can upskill this talent pool according to our need to conduct the manufacturing of the semiconductor. So, you know government of India is conducting a event, semicon event from September 11 to 13. So, now let us see what is the key objective of this semicon program of India. We have already seen that we have a gap in case of manufacturing of semiconductor. So, the main objective of this semicon initiative is to establish the fabrication plan for semiconductors. Under this program, we are also going to develop the packaging and testing infrastructure. So, in this way, we can increase the capability of India in case of packaging and a testing infrastructure. This will increase the self-reliance of India with respect to the semiconductor industry. We are also going to promote the research and development and talent development to improve our efficiency in the semiconductor industry. So, this program will also increase the partnership between public and private partners as well as India and the global players. One important thing you have to know is that US, China, South Korea and Taiwan major global players with respect to the semiconductors. So, if we are setting up the fabrication plant under the semicon initiative which will help to reduce the reliance on import thereby improving the self-reliancy of the India. That is why production linked initiative schemes are introduced to improve the domestic manufacturing in India. So, setting up the fabrication plants will help to promote the economic growth as well as create many jobs for the young India. So, these are some key objective and the importance of the semicon program of India. The main objective of the semicon is to set up the fabrication plant which will help us to manufacturing the chip which is very much essential for the application in various sectors. So, why there is a importance for semiconductors in the current era? So, we have high dig digital ambitions in India. So, to achieve these ambitions which is it is very much essential to improve the semiconductor industry in India. The current 5G system involves the application of semiconductor in it. So, if you are promoting the semiconductor industry, it will help us to enable the advanced technologies such as the IoT which is the Internet of Things and Smart Cities. It is also help us to improve the job creation and also to attract the investment from the other countries which will help us to boost the domestic growth. Setting up manufacturing sectors in the Indian soil will help us to reduce the dependence on the import. We have already seen that semiconductor is the foundation for the digital infrastructure. So, it is very much critical to build the digital infrastructure in India. Another important aspect with respect to semiconductor is the, it will help us to ensure the national, national security in India. Because you know, all the different system, including the communication system, the surveillance system, 
and the weapons are using semiconductor in them. By promoting the semiconductor production in India, we can ensure the security of the system in the defense sector. Because of all these reasons, it is said that semiconductors are important. So, now let us see a prelims practice question with respect to the semiconductor. One of the key goal of Semicon India program is to achieve a 100 percentage import substitution of the semiconductor chips B to establish a semiconductor fabrication plant in India to reduce the semiconductor demand in the electronic sector to focus exclusively on the semiconductor design and research and development. So, the correct answer is B to establish the fabrication plant. We have already discussed we have a gap in the manufacturing sector. So, the main objective of this semicon is to establish the fabs in India. So, now let us move on to the next article. So, look at this news article, Green Steel Mission Eyed Amid the Climate Change Thrust. So, with this article as base, we will understand about the green steel and the green steel mission of India. So, let us start it simple. What is steel? So, steel is a product derived from the iron ore. You can see it anywhere and everywhere, starting from the kitchen utensils, cutlery to the construction and the machinery. Steel is very much essential for the growth of a country. So, this steel, the traditional method of steel production involves high amount of emission of carbon dioxide. But green steel is produced with a minimal carbon emission with the usage of sustainable technologies. So, it is produced using cleaner technology and processes which will reduce the carbon footprint in the ecosystem. So, this green steel initiative is aligning with the global climate change commitment. For example, the Paris Agreement. India has agreed to the Paris Agreement. Based on the agreement, we have agreed to reduce the carbon dioxide emission and also to adapt the sustainable practices to align with that goal. So, now let us try to understand what is the basic difference between the traditional steel and the green steel. See, usually the steel is produced from the iron ore. The iron ore along with the coke and limestone is used for the production of steel. So, this coke is nothing but the reduced form of coal which has high amount of carbon in it. So, using the blast furnace technique, the coke is used as an heat energy source to reduce the iron ore to steel. So, this involves high amount of carbon dioxide emission. On the other hand, green steel is used, is produced using renewable energy sources and highly advanced technology such as the carbon capture and utilization and storage along with it electric arc furnace is used. So, these cleaner technology will help in minimal carbon dioxide emission which will align with the global agreements. So, this traditional steel leads to high carbon dioxide emission but the green steel is producing less carbon dioxide. As we have already said, the traditional steel involves usage of blast furnace technology. So, this technology is using coal as an energy source but in green steel manufacturing, we are going to replace this coal with the hydrogen which is derived from the renewable energy. So, in this case, renewable energy such as the solar energy and the wind energy is used to reduce the water to hydrogen and oxygen. Here only oxygen is released and not the carbon dioxide. So, this hydrogen is used in the production of steel. This clean technology helps in carbon dioxide emission. And next is the electric arc furnaces. So, this furnace will use electricity which is derived from the renewable sources to melt the scrap steel. But usually coal is used, now it is replaced with the electricity which is derived from the renewable resources. Next is the CCUS technology. So, this technology is nothing but they will capture the emitted carbon dioxide and they will store it underground or they can even repurpose the carbon dioxide emission. So, this CCUS is nothing but the carbon capture, utilization and storage technology. So, this technology is also adapted in case of the manufacturing of the green steel. Along with the technologies such as the waste heat recovery 
and coke dry quenching is also used to improve the energy efficiency in the manufacturing of green steel. On the whole, we are using cleaner technologies such as hydrogen replacing the coal and carbon capture utilization storage to reduce the emission. Now we are going to discuss about the green steel mission which is mentioned in the news article. As we have already said, this mission will replace the coal with the hydrogen in the production of steel. Next is the formulation of the policy framework. So, initiatives such as the green public procurement is undertaken. So, under this GPP, incentives are given both to the private as well as the public partners for the usage of green steel in their work. Next is the incentives for the small producers. So, under this green steel mission, financial as well as the technical support is given to the small street producers to increase the production of the green steel. Along with that, pilot projects are also undertaken to replace the coal with the hydrogen in the blast furnaces. So, this will help us to achieve the 100% hydrogen based direct reduced iron plants. So, these are the main components of the green steel mission which is mentioned in the news article. Now coming to the initiatives taken by the government to promote the green steel production, first is the national green hydrogen mission. So this mission was launched by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. So this will promote the production of green hydrogen and its usage. Already said green hydrogen uses solar and wind energy to reduce the water to hydrogen and oxygen. Similarly, we also have blue hydrogen which uses the natural gas for its production. Next is the PAD scheme which is nothing but the performance achievement and trade scheme. So, under this scheme, the government is incentivizing energy efficiency program in various schemes, various sectors. Next, coming to the steel scrap recycling policy. Under this policy, recycled steel usage is promoted and the most important initiative is the carbon credit trading scheme. Carbon credit is nothing but the credit points which allows the emission for the carbon dioxide. So, one credit will be equal to the 1 ton of carbon dioxide emission. It is nothing but holding a permit and higher authority will issue the carbon credit which will be acting as a permit for an industry to emit certain amount of carbon dioxide into the ecosystem. So, if one industry is not using the carbon credit, they can trade it with the other industry who is in need of them. So, this carbon credit trading scheme will facilitate the reduction of emission through a market based mechanism. So, now we will see a prelims practice question with respect to the green steel. The first statement is green steel refers to the steel produced using renewable energy and alternate production techniques such as the techniques which reduce carbon emission. The next statement is the hydrogen based direct production of iron ore is a key technology used in the green steel production. The third statement is India is currently the largest producer of green steel in the world. So, with respect to this question, the first two statements are correct. So, green steel is using the renewable energy such as the hydrogen in its manufacturing. So, this is also helping in the reducing the emission of the carbon dioxide in the ecosystem. We are also using a hydrogen based direct reduction of iron ore for reducing the carbon emission while production of the green steel. So, but third statement is incorrect because India is not the largest producer of green steel in the world. So, the correct answer is A, 1 and 2 only. We have come to end of today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and give your thoughts as comment. Thank you. Have a nice day.